the first person of Indian heritage to have the United States Medical School, Dr. Karan C. Patel. Thank you. <clears throat> President Henbury, Chancellor Lipman, Board of Trustees, HPD Board of Governors, senior university officials, students, faculty, staff, and the families of the College of Osteopathic Medicine. I have had the opportunity to address many different audiences, both here in the United States of America and around the world. And I have told many audiences how happy I was to be in this place or that place. But I can tell you, I am truly honored to be standing before you this morning. I want to congratulate each and every one of you on arriving at this milestone in your career. As you walk across this stage today to receive your white coat, your journey in medicine will begin. The donning of the white coat is a century-old tradition. The white coat ceremony is a rite of passage welcome you as a new medical student into the medical profession. As medical students, you are bound by the same professional commitments that bind all physicians. This ceremony will join the symbol of the white coat with the virtues of altruism, responsibility, duty, honor, respect, and compassion. While the white coat is a symbol of our profession, there are, however, some practical reasons for wearing your white coat. Besides the ease of recognition, your white coats will also carry reference material, folded journal articles, medical equipment, including stethoscope, pen light, tuning fork, and reflex hammer. So, as you now embark on this long and hallowed journey that leads to the privilege of serving as a physician healer, let me share with you a few words of advice. First, always keep in mind that becoming and being a physician is a journey, not just a destination. And like all good journeys, the scenery is going to change from time to time and sometimes very rapidly. This change certainly applies to your medical education, practice of medicine, as well as the way you do things, the tools you use and where you use them as all these are constantly evolving. The second involves what you need to learn in the next few years. It is not what you think, and possibly not even what some of the faculty think you need to learn. In my opinion, the absolute best things for you to learn, develop, and master are not the vast array of facts, disease processes, or curative therapies that are overtly taught here and in the residency. Yes. You should have sturdy foundation in these things, but some of these facts changes as our understanding of the science changes. Besides, much of the minutia can be readily accessed electronically. In my opinion, our abilities to actively listen, appreciate context, employ critical thinking, make sense of complicated and complex clinical scenarios and engage patients in needed behavior modification 
are going to be the skills that keep us relevant and distinguishable as physicians and sets us apart from other clinicians. The most difficult of these skills, believe it or not, involves listening. Remember that the patient and their families will almost always tell you what you need to know to help them. Just let them talk while you listen. Learn to listen. My last piece of advice is both simplest but also the most profound, at least for me. Focus on the patient. Every aspect of what you do and who you are should flow from them. If you focus on the needs of your patients, you will get it right nearly every time. Your patients will love you and your colleagues will respect you. Most importantly, everything else will take care of itself. As you get deeper into the profession, you will no doubt hear grumblings about where the direction of medical practice is going, or hear physician colleagues disparage the state of things. To this I say, remember, it's a journey. The scenery is going to change. Don't forget, however, that you have the opportunity to help set the course if you'll only take it. Chart your own course, create your own destiny, and be a leader in charting the course for future physicians as well. Before I conclude, let me not forget to congratulate you and your families for the achievement of becoming a part of this class and of the NOAA Southeastern University. Along with the faculty and administration, I look forward to your donning what surely is recognizable part of the physician's wardrobe, the white coat that for well over 100 years has symbolized the scientific foundation for the practice of medicine. Today, in the recognition of the step in your journey towards the practice of medicine, we will call on the symbolism of the white coat as your studies now begin to focus on the care of the patient, which is the essence of who we are as physicians. In the words of Sir William Osler, the practice of medicine is an art not a trade, a calling, not a business. This reminds me of a story. One day, a poor boy who was selling goods from door to door to pay his way through school, only one dime left, and he was hungry. He decided to ask for a meal at the next house. However, he lost his nerve when a lovely young woman opened the door. Instead of a meal, he asked for a drink of water. She, she thought he looked hungry, so she brought him a large glass of milk. He drank it slowly and asked, how much do I owe you? She replied, you don't owe me anything. Mother has taught us never to accept for pay for kindness. And as Howard Kelly left the house, he said then, I thank you from my bottom of my heart. He not only felt stronger physically, but his faith in God and man became strong also. He had been ready to give up and quit. Years later, that young woman became critically ill. The local doctors were baffled. They finally sent her to the big city where they called a specialist called Dr. Howard Kelly to evaluate and provide her care. When he heard the name of the town she came from, a strange light 
filled his eyes. Immediately, he rose and went down the all of the hospital floor to her room. He recognized her at once. He went back, determined to do his best to save her. After a long struggle, the battle was won. Dr. Kelly requested the business office to pass the final bill to him for approval. He looked at it and then wrote something on the edge of the bill and the bill was sent to her room. She had feared to open the bill for she was sure it would take her the rest of her life to pay the bill. Finally, she had the courage to open the bill and something caught her eye. She read these words, paid in full with one glass of milk. <laughs> Tears of joy flooded her eyes as she prayed. Thank God for, thank you God for your love has spread abroad through human hearts and hands. So let me remind you, the practice of medicine is an art, not a trade, a calling, not a business. And each and every one of you have answered that call. At our college, we believe that a declaration of commitment is important at the time the students accept the obligation of our profession, and therefore the oath should be taken at the beginning of the medical school, not at the end. This oath reminds me of a famous poem by Oikake Sati Joshua entitled Faithfulness, a character of honesty and conduct of integrity, a journey of fidelity, a life of authenticity before the face of God in public and private, in labor and leisure. Thus, this is an oath not only applying to our profession, but our life. It is the beginning of a process of professional and personal development that will never stop throughout our life. Heed and follow this message, and I guarantee you the sky is the limit. Thank you. God bless you and God bless America.